start welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about carbon dioxide transport we all know that carbon dioxide is produced at the level of tissues and that carbon dioxide from the tissues should have to brought to the lungs and from the lungs you have to take out the carbon dioxide from your body now let's start it from here see in arterial blood okay in arterial blood the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 mm hg okay in arterial blood the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 mm hg and how much amount of carbon dioxide is there in 100 ml of blood in a 100 ml of arterial blood there is 48 ml of carbon dioxide now it sounds surprising for you in 100 ml of oxygenated blood or arterial blood how much amount of oxygen is there 20 ml of oxygen is there but see how much amount of carbon dioxide is there almost 48 ml of carbon dioxide is there so 100 ml of arterial blood is carrying 48 ml of carbon dioxide now this blood arterial blood is coming to the tissues and we all know at the level of tissues carbon dioxide is produced okay carbon dioxide is produced so what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the level of tissues will be more so what happens is that carbon dioxide is going to enter into the blood right? because here carbon dioxide is getting produced that carbon dioxide will enter into the blood now what are the changes will happen please look at the venous side okay now in the venous side as the carbon dioxide got added on to the blood the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the venous blood became 46 mm hg instead of 40 mm hg it became 46 mm hg and how much amount of carbon dioxide is there in the venous blood or deoxygenated blood it is for 52 ml per dl okay 52 ml per dl so how much is going to the tissues 48 ml how much is coming out of the tissue 52 ml so what is the difference 4 ml okay so 4 ml of carbon dioxide is produced at the level of tissues i shouldn't say 4 ml of carbon dioxide is produced the 100 ml of blood will go to the tissues and catch up 4 ml of carbon dioxide and that 4 ml is coming back okay 100 ml blood i'm talking to the 100 ml blood 100 ml blood is going to the tissues 100 ml blood can carry how much amount of carbon dioxide 4 ml of carbon dioxide just uh, try to recap when we are discussing about the oxygen transport 100 ml of oxygenated blood is carrying how much amount of oxygen to the tissues 20 ml of oxygen while coming out of the tissues how much amount of oxygen is there in the deoxygenated blood 15 ml so how much is it delivered to the tissues 5 ml so 100 ml blood will deliver 5 ml of oxygen to the tissues the same 100 ml blood will take up 4 ml of carbon dioxide and come back to the lungs okay 4 ml is getting picked up now let's see like you know in detail how this exactly happens okay how this exactly happens now we will see here we have already discussed that carbon dioxide is getting produced at the level of tissues now this carbon dioxide how it is transported i have taught you majority amount of carbon dioxide is transported in the form of bicarbonates and 30 percent is transported in the form of carboxy hemoglobin now let's see here now this carbon dioxide it will enter into the rbc okay carbon dioxide is entering into the rbc now we all know inside rbc definitely there is water it's going to react with the water so co2 h plus h2o will give rise to h2 co3 now this is carbonic acid now this h2 co3 is going to split into hco3 minus ions that is bicarbonate ions and h plus protons see unnecessarily protons are getting generated inside the rbc that's something not good so now this protons what will happen is these protons will bind with the hemoglobin okay hemoglobin the protons whatever are produced here these bad protons are going to bind with the hemoglobin so what we are having is hb h okay hbh now this proton is buffered the proton is buffered with the help of a molecule called hemoglobin so hemo hemoglobin is acting as a buffer now the problem is with whom the problem is with bicarbonate okay now this bicarbonate carbon dioxide is converted into bicarbonate carbon dioxide is changing its form into bicarbonates that's why we are saying majority amount of carbon dioxide is transferred in the form of bicarbonate ions now these bicarbonate ions they will they will go into the plasma they have to go into the plasma 
okay now this bicarbonate is going out so this bicarbonate is coming here it's CO3 minus it is there in the plasma so bicarbonate is traveling where in the RBC or in the plasma in the plasma now to throw one bicarbonate out to throw one negative charge out of the cell it have to take one negative charge into the cell okay to maintain the electron neutrality one chloride ions are being coming into the cell okay now this is called as chloride shift okay are also called as Hamburger's phenomena okay phenomenon so chloride shift or Hamburger's phenomena is happening at the level of tissues okay while sending the bicarbonate out of the RBCs now this RBC it is again coming back to the lungs at the level of lungs what will happen is please concentrate here guys now whatever the bicarbonate is there in the plasma now when the bicarbonates are coming to the level of lungs okay at the level of lungs what will happen is now this bicarbonate ions again they will go back into the RBC now HCO3 HCO3 minus it came into the RBC now as the negative charges are entering into the cell again the chloride is pumped back, pumped back again into the plasma so chloride is again going back so this is called as reverse chloride shift okay reverse chloride shift is happening now this bicarbonate what will happen now this bicarbonate will again react with the protons now the protons got detached from the hemoglobin now hemoglobin function is to carry oxygen not the proton now hemoglobin molecules they will release the proton so that proton is again going to react back to the bicarbonate ions now see this bicarbonate is going to react with the proton it will give you uh, h2co3 h2co3 is again going to form now this h2co3 is going to split into co2 that co2 is going to diffuse back into the alveoli why because inside the alveoli the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is zero now the same partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the venous blood is 46 mm hg okay so difference is there gradient is there the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the venous blood okay this venous blood whatever is going to the lungs it's 46 mm hg and in the alveolus it is zero so carbon dioxide is diffusing into the alveoli and carbon dioxide as well as water h2o okay now that bike uh, now this h2co3 molecule it is again dividing into co2 and h2o and the carbon dioxide is released into the alveoli now this carbon dioxide will exit the lungs during expiration so this is how carbon dioxide is transported majorly in the form of bicarbonate ions okay now after seeing this let's see two important effects one is called as Bohr's effect Bohr's effect and second one is called as Haldane's effect so what is Bohr's effect and what is Haldane's effect? Now Bohr's effect is see release of oxygen molecules from hemoglobin to the tissues. Okay, so this is called as Bohr's effect. Bohr's effect means the release of oxygen molecules. Hemoglobin is the releasing the oxygen molecules. Whenever the hemoglobin is reaching the tissues, now there at the level of tissues hemoglobin is releasing the oxygen molecules or unloading the oxygen molecules and picking up the carbon dioxide so this is called as Bohr's effect okay now what is Haldane's effect Haldane's effect is loading of oxygen molecules to hemoglobin so loading is happening where loading is happening at the level of lungs so loading of oxygen molecule to the hemoglobin to release of further release of carbon dioxide okay now at the level of lungs what is happening at the level of lungs hemoglobin is releasing the carbon dioxide out and it will pick up the oxygen this is called as Haldane's effect loading of oxygen molecules okay onto the hemoglobin and release of carbon dioxide this is called as Haldane's effect now after discussing this let's see the summary okay now let's take it down here guys oxygen transport first oxygen need to be transported to 
tissues how much oxygen should be transported to the tissues see 100 ml of blood contains 15 grams of hemoglobin we all know 100 ml of blood oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood contain 15 grams of hemoglobin now this 15 grams of hemoglobin is carrying how much amount of oxygen 20 ml of oxygen why because 1 gram of hemoglobin see 1 gram of hemoglobin can carry 1.34 ml of oxygen 1 gram so 15 into how much 15 into 1.34 will become 20 ml of oxygen so what i am saying is so 100 ml of blood is having 20 ml of oxygen out of this 20 ml of oxygen how much is actually delivered to the tissues only 5 ml so 5 ml is getting delivered to the tissues now see guys if 100 ml can deliver 5 ml to the tissues 1000 ml blood can deliver how much to the tissues 50 ml per minute okay here also 5 ml per minute we are not having 1000 ml blood we are having how much 5000 ml blood almost we are having 5 liters of blood now this 5 liters of blood can deliver how much amount of oxygen to the tissues yes it is 250 ml per minute so how much our tissues are getting how much amount of oxygen our tissues are getting 250 ml so our blood okay arterial blood 5 liters of blood is delivering 250 ml of oxygen per minute in the same way let's see how much amount of carbon dioxide is getting delivered okay how much co2 how much co2 is produced by tissues how much uh, how much is produced by the tissues and how much is getting out of the body okay how much amount of carbon dioxide produced by the tissues and getting out of body very simple guys i have already taught you 100 ml blood 100 ml blood can take out how much amount of carbon dioxide can take out 4 ml of carbon dioxide if 100 ml can take 4 ml out 1000 ml will take out 40 ml of carbon dioxide out every minute okay now we are having how much amount of blood we are having 5000 ml so 5000 5 into 4 so 200 ml of carbon dioxide is getting out of the body every minute so tissues are demanding tissues are taking how much amount of oxygen tissues are taking 250 ml of oxygen and releasing how much amount of carbon dioxide 200 ml of carbon dioxide every minute so with this we have discussed all the important points regarding the oxygen transport oxygen hemoglobin association dissociation curve as well as we have seen how carbon dioxide is transported in the lungs hope the video is helpful thank you